Hello, everyone. Welcome to module five, the last module of the short course. I would like to begin the session by briefly introducing myself. My name is Ching Feng Li, and I am an assistant professor at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. At Hopkins, I teach courses on monitoring and evaluation methods and system sense modeling. My current research interests include demography, maternal mortality, system science, and big data. Over the past few years, I've also been the coordinator of the census working group under the United Nations Maternal Mortality Estimation Interagency Group, or MIG. During modules one to four, you have learned the concepts of maternal and pregnancy-related mortality, data collection methods, and calculations, particularly the adjustment methods for and reporting. As you must have noticed, the calculations and adjustments are mathematically complex to understand and tedious to apply. That has been a significant barrier to the utilization of maternal mortality data from census. Fortunately, you don't have to code the formula manually. A workbook has been developed to automate the calculations. In this module, I would like to introduce the, uh, the workbook go through major components of the workbook and use an example to show you how to use it. The workbook was developed by MIC in coordination with the US Census Bureau and the USAID. Over the past few years, I have had the pleasure to work with the original developers of the workbook to improve it further. The calculations were coded in VBA or Visual Basic for application developed by Microsoft. The workbook works well in both Windows and Mac, but you will not be able to modify the formulas in Mac. The navigation button, like here, are, uh, do not work in Mac either. The workbook contains worksheets that fall under five general categories, data entry, data checking, calculations, intermediate result, and final result. We'll go over them one by one. The manual worksheet serves as the navigation panel for the whole workbook. The first input is country name. In this module, we will use Vietnam as an example. The region cell is filled automatically from a built-in database. Let's try another country. Uganda. As you can see that the region cell is updated automatically. Let's revert to Vietnam. The next input is the reference date of the synthesis using year, month, day format. In this module, we will use the two synthesis conducted in 1999 and 2009, respectively. Theoretically, the workbook does not have any requirement on the gap between the two synthesis, as long as the associated assumptions are met. However, caution is advised with the use of a workbook when the two synthesis are more than 12 years apart. After setting up the country date panel, click data input button over here. That will lead you to the input sheet. Other buttons in the sheet navigate to respective worksheets for data checking, calculation, intermediate results, and final results. This is the input worksheet. The panel on the top left corner includes parameters for the adjustment. Country name, since the state, were populated automatically based on your input in the manual sheet. Cells B4 to B7 are used to indicate the oldest age groups in the data, which need to be specified by the user before entering population and death data. Then the age group rows over here will be automatically adjusted. For Vietnam, we will use 75 years, but you can also use other ages depending on data availability. Those age limits can be the same or different from each other. To the right, there is the button called clear data. It clears all previously entered population, deaths, and fertility data. 
it's highly recommended to click this button before entering your own data to avoid any potential confusion. For example, some data from a previous case may be carried over by mistake. When you download this workbook from website, it is loaded with sample data that need to be cleared before entering your own data. Just a reminder that this clear operation cannot be undone. Make sure to save a copy if you have already entered some of your data. In this module, we will use data from Vietnam for demonstrational purpose. The data are collected by General Statistical Office of Vietnam. More information about data and results can be found at the agency's official website, as well as related publications, such as a paper by Hill et al. 2018. The first step is to paste the population data by sex and by age from the two censuses. If the original data distinguish age zero and age group one to four, like over here, we have two options to enter the data. The user can manually aggregate the data to the age group zero to four before pasting them to the workbook. The second option is to paste data for age zero at row 14 and uh, paste data for age group one to four to row 15. The labels for those two age groups will be automatically adjusted for each option. There's also a row for unknown or missing ages. The PRMR calculation are only based on female population deaths and births. The male data and calculation are presented here just as an indicator of overall data quality. The calculations for males and females are performed separately, so including male does not affect the calculation for females, which is of major interest to us. Do the same for death data by age and by sex. Then, we move on to the panel for pregnancy-related deaths. Enter the data for each census by five by five-year age group. Here, the age group values are of the format 12 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, etc. If the available data does not have value for 12 to 14, the related cells should be left blank, like in this case here. Similarly, if you do not have data for the first census, just leave the cells blank. Again, like the case here. The proportion of pregnancy-related deaths will be calculated by built-in functions. The PRMR calculation requires fertility data for the interstitial period. If the fertility data are only available for the second census, then the, only the second census data will be used for the interstitial period. If the data are available from both censuses, then the average from the two censuses will be used. The next panel is on births during the 12 months before each census, like over here. The last panel is on children ever born by age of mother. Basically, entering those data are all you need to do to use the workbook. Once you finish entering the data, all other worksheets will be automatically populated by the built-in formulas. The built-in functions will assess the data for and reporting, make necessary changes and adjustments and calculate the adjusted PRMR using the methods that were covered in previous modules. The workbook allows the user to use fertility data from alternative sources. This option is helpful when the user has access to other fertility data of better quality than the census fertility data, or when fertility data from the census are not available at all. In those cases, the user can use 
alternative fertility inputs for the calculation. This worksheet allow you to enter each specific fertility data from as many as seven surveys. It's one survey, another one, and up to seven surveys. But even when you have up to seven data points, it does not necessarily mean you should use all of them. The selection of data points should be based on your understanding of the data sources and the regression fading. Since the survey days may not exactly overlap with the census days, the workbook will use the a regression model to interpolate or extrapolate the fertility for the census reference period. The user need to enter survey date in years. So convert months and day to a single number in years. For example, if the survey was conducted in January, 1970, then the user should enter the date this way. We use the middle of the month for the exact survey date. If the survey was conducted during a period such as July to September 1980, the user should enter the number this way. Over here, we should use the middle of that period as the exact survey date. The projection is based on a linear regression of log transform the fertility rates on the survey days. Taking log transformation helps prevent abnormal projection values, for example, unreasonably low or high values. Regression fading and um, extrapolation or interpolation are done for each age group separately. There are certain scenarios where using alternative sources are inappropriate. For example, when the days for the alternative sources are too far away from the second census. The projected fertility from the regression model may not be reasonable or reliable. That is because the temporal trajectory of fertility rates may have changed recently. In this case, the user will receive a warning message at the bottom that reads as inappropriate, cannot estimate fertility, alternative estimate too old. The cell over here, D22, will display appropriate when the alternative sor fertility sources are considered appropriate to use. I would like to clarify that those data are just meant to illustrate how this worksheet functions. They are not actual data from Vietnam, so they will not actually be used in this um, module. This worksheet contains the results for the average intersensual population and average annual deaths. Again, the calculations are performed by built-in functions. The user need not to make any changes to the worksheet. This is the core component of the whole workbook. You may want to review the methodology covered in previous modules. The first option, 75 plus, over here, refers to the oldest age group used in the adjustments. A general rule is to use 75 plus if the oldest age group in the data set is above 75. Otherwise, simply use the oldest age group in a data set at the terminal age group. In that case, the user need to modify this worksheet to accommodate younger open age groups. It's generally not recommended to use terminal age above 75, even though the data are available. That is due to the expectation that age misreporting will be more severe at older ages. The DDB male panel contains the general growth balance method for evaluating the completeness of death recording. Below the panel are the estimates from the orthogonal regression. The user need to enter the age boundary in blue in a row AJ to fit. Over here, by default, the workbook used five and 70 for the fitting but the user can change to other appropriate age ranges. The initial age group is usually five plus years. 
please refer to episode one, module three, for choosing the age group to fit regression. As I mentioned above, the calculation for males are only meant to serve as an indicator of their overall data quality. They do not affect the PRMR estimates. If you look at the bottom part of the panel, you will see the results such as slope, intercept, completeness of census one relative to census two, K1, K2, and C. Of this, the completeness of census one relative to census two is, and the completeness of deaths are the result you, you want to examine carefully. We will use this number to adjust for the end counting of deaths. Then the worksheet evaluates the completeness of death recording for female using the DGB method. It's formulated exactly like the DGB male panel described above. Like for males, here we see the completeness of uh, census one relative to census two and completeness of deaths. Below the female panel, a two plus illustrating the regression results. Each data point represent a pair of uh, observed death rate and a residual death rate. If the data points are randomly and closely scattered around the regression line, then the application of the DGB method is appropriate. The plot can also be used to inform the choice of age ranges to fit. For example, if data points at very young ages are way off the regression line, the user may want to exclude those very young ages from the fading. Because the estimation are based on open-ended intervals, the user cannot exclude a single point in the middle, such as age 25 to 29. You can exclude points below age 30 in that case. For the VNN data, the fading is nearly perfect for females. You can see all the lines scattered around the straight line. The fading is terrible for males. Although that's not our focus, let's use this opportunity to discuss potential reasons for poor fading. Net migration is a common reason for violating GDB assumptions. In this case, using ages less affected by net migration may be a solution. However, that is usually complicated by the violation of two other assumptions, age invariant completeness of population and deaths, accurate recording of ages for both population and deaths. Those two assumptions may not be met for very old ages. In some, using old initial groups such as 35 may reduce the influence of net migration. But whether the resulting advantage overweighs the disadvantages of violating other assumptions depends on data checking. The SEG male panel evaluates the completeness of death recording for males using the SEG method. It contains seven columns of the same form, but for specific open-ended age ranges. Below the table are values for 45Q15, that is for 10 to 39, that is 40 to 58, and the ratio and the life expectancy at the age of 75. Like in the GGB method, the user need to choose the age range for the fading. The estimated completeness by age group is shown in column F over here. And the average completeness of deaths based on the fit, but based on the faded age groups is shown at the bottom of the table. It denotes age group specific percentage of deaths that are captured by the census. This number over here. Let's move on to the SEG female panel, which is formatted exactly like the SEG male panel described above. The results have the same interpretation. Below the SEG 
female panel R2+, plus, illustrating the result from the SEG method and combined GDB SEG method. Each dot over here, like this, represents the estimated completeness for an age group. The dots from a method are expected to be on a horizontal line, indicating that the estimated completeness is stable across age groups. Then their average will be used as the overall completeness. In our data set, the lines for the female are pretty flat. For female, completeness seems to be higher for older ages, but again, males are not our focus. In some cases, the estimated completeness fluctuates substantially across age groups or has a trend, like for, female, for males in this case. That may suggest that the application of the SEG method is not appropriate or sufficient. In that case, the combined GDB SEG method should be preferred. The bottom panel is for the GDB SEG method, first for male and then for female. As described in module three, the combined GDB SEG method should always be preferred or at least generally be preferred. This worksheet contains just one table that shows the application of the PF ratio method for synthetic cohorts as explained in module four, episode three. Some cells will appear blank unless the data from the input worksheet are available from both synthesis and the two synthesis are about 10 years apart. The adjustment factor is the average PF ratio for ages 20 to 34 years, which are prime childbearing ages. In this case, the quality of the fertility data seem pretty high. The estimated completeness of fertility data is about 98%. The final fertility worksheet calculates fertility adjustment factor using a female population aged between 15 and 49 years and their respective age-specific fertility rates, or ASFR. The results are then used as the birth adjustment factors in determining PRMR. Below the country name and census days, there is the input option called source of fertility data. If you click the cell, you will see two options, census or alternate. This is the place where you tell the workbook whether you want to use the census fertility or alternative fertility. Three scenarios are presented here. Observed interstitial ASFR, adjusted interstitial ASFR, census two adjusted ASFR. Column E highlighted here shows the implied interstitial annual births estimated from the observed ASFR from the two censuses. Column G shows the implied annual births for the interstitial period adjusted using the PF ratio method. Column I shows the implied annual birth for census two, adjusted using the same adjustment factor. We will use all three to calculate PRMR. This worksheet presents the main results of the workbook, including the calculated PRMR, as well as proportion of pregnancy-related deaths from total deaths, observed pregnancy-related deaths, and observed births. It had two panels. The top panel has estimated pregnancy-related mortality for the interstitial period. The bottom panel has the estimate for the second census. Let's look at the top panel. The bottom one can be interpreted in the same way. The panel presents estimates from eight different combinations of adjustment methods. The first row highlighted here shows estimated PRMR based on unadjusted mortality and unadjusted fertility. Before adjusting 
mortality or fertility, the calculated PRMR is 41 per 100,000 live births. The second row shows estimates based on unadjusted mortality but adjusted fertility. Apparently, the impact of fertility adjustment is minimal. That is because the completeness of fertility reporting is um, 98%, and therefore the adjustment is marginal. The other rows are based on different mortality and fertility adjustment methods. The impact of mortality adjustment is much more substantial than that of fertility adjustment. Column P, highlighted here, shows PRMR ratio. PRMR. You can see that depending on whether the mortality or fertility are adjusted or not, the PRM ratio differs substantially. When comparing PRMR, keep in mind that the PRMR is expressed per 100,000 lab births. Therefore, small differences may not be uh, significant. For example, the difference between 72 and 74 may be random when we are looking at uh, the indicator per 100,000. The final choice of the ratio depends on which method combination is the most uh, appropriate for the given data. For example, if the GDB SEG adjustment completeness is more stable across age groups than the SEG method, then GDB SEG should be preferred. We recommend that you also compare the result to estimates from other sources, for example, the demographic and health survey. That will also give you an indication of whether you want to adjust mortality, fertility, or both. There is no formal method for evaluating the proportion of deaths that are pregnancy related. Reported proportions vary widely from population to population and they are positively related to the level of maternal mortality. The best option currently available for the evaluation is a simple plausibility check. Since pregnancy is the risky event that gives rise to pregnancy-related deaths, the age pattern of pregnancy-related deaths should resemble the age pattern of birth. A flattening pattern of pregnancy-related deaths may reflect higher risk at younger or older ages. In this example, by looking at um, the three trajectories, we can conclude that age pattern of death and birth seem to be closed, although again, there's no formal statistical method or test. The graphs worksheet includes 10 graphs checking population and death data. They are population by age, population by birth cohort, age ratios, average annual growth rates by age, and age specific death rates. The remaining three worksheets contain tables checking accuracy of age reporting by sex. If there are outliers or the overall curve do not look reasonable, the user should check the input data and the intermediate calculation sheets. 